when, uh, when, you, when you look at the way people access this bursary program, you know, first of all, it is quantified. If, uh, let's, say, let's say, and I'll give you a good example. My county government runs a very wonderful bursary program called the Elimon Justice Initiative. And I'm happy. As, as a county, we've had uh, many young men and women who in the past couldn't access educational opportunities because they didn't have the fees. But when the former governor, current CS Muria, took over in 2013, he had a very brilliant idea towards supporting uh, the needy. But 400 million has been put in place to pay bursaries to students. The requirement is you must have 350 and above for you to access this program. Many students fall below that threshold. What happened to that guy who got 349, 320, 300, and has an admission to a certain school? That tells you he's already automatically cut off. So it doesn't benefit everyone. It is not universal. As opposed to putting money to schools directly and tell people, can you just access education universally? And even the way the whole process is being run, you know, you have 50 million as an MP. You advertise, you give out forms, bursary forms to many people. Not all will get that bursary program. Giving a form, filling the form, and actual uh, getting that bursary is a different story altogether. So we, we, we know it doesn't happen. So it's all about balancing the political interest, regionalism, and all that. So we are still, uh, I mean, way, way far much behind. Let me give you a practical example of the figures you're talking about. It's, it's, it's data, statistical data. Let's say every county runs, and I'm sure every other county, because my county runs about half a billion for batteries as a program for a year. And it's a small county. If we do by 47 counties, uh, averaging at 500 million, that's around 23, 24 billion uh, of, of money going towards uh, scholarships and batteries. If you look at uh, CDF, give them 50 million per constituency, and they are 290. That's roughly another, looking at 2, two billion there about, roughly. So that's a whole 26 or 7 billion in form of money that we can put into schools directly and still look for other money where government has money, of course, seal the loopholes of uh, corruption, seal the loopholes of uh, making sure uh, money is not lost, and have free secondary education at the highest level. I mean, it's, 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 it's doable, really. It's doable. We just have to sustain the conversation and change the mentality towards making sure people are so straddled under bursaries that they can't go to school without Chimera giving them support. And I'm not saying it because I feel bad. No, I am a leader, and I know as a leader I must, uh, I, I, I must, I must be able to you know, support my people. But I feel this uh, business, this politics of bursaries, and I'm not saying when we remove bursaries from members of parliament, we, they will still have money to do roads, for instance, under care, where they are, what they're doing. They'll still have money to do schools, infrastructure. They will still have money to do police stations. We are not collapsing MGCDF altogether, but we're just moving these funds that are going towards education into making sure education becomes universally free and accessible to everyone. That's my argument. And these are checks that don't bounce. Lakini ipo haja ya uongozi uliopo kuhakikisha kwamba mfumo huu umeweza kufanywa kwa njia iliyo safi, iliyo ya sawa na iliyo na haki. Kwa sababu utakuta kila kiongozi ndani ya nchi hii ana mpango wa basari. MCA, mbunge, gavana, women rep, wote wana fedha ambayo inakwenda kusaidia masomo kwa vijana. Lakini bado ipo ile fedha haitoshi. Mimi mwenyewe nikiwa saneta mteule, bado inafuatwa na wazazi wengi kutoka kaunti yangu na hata kaunti mbalimbali zingine wakitisha msaada wa karo za shule. Na sina sina hundi, sina CDF, sina ngafu, sina lolote. Lakini kwa sababu ya uongozi na nibidi nisaidie. Na nimesaidia wengi. Hata hapa niku nastaka baadha mwazi muonyesha kwamba ili support nimepeana kwa wanafunzi. Nimepeana cheki nyingi shule ya matuga. Hapa kuna shule ya kwale. Iko shule ya matuga tena. Iko Kenya Institute of Social Education Thika. Iko na Nyuki High School. Ipo Wire Girls. Ipo St. Paul's Gekano. Na nyanginezo KMTC. Wananiomba msahada wa basari. 
ikiwa tutaweza kuzungumza na kubaliana kama viongozi tuweke mfumo ambao fedha zote hizi ile fedha ya women rep fedha ya mbunge fedha ya gavana ambayo inakwenda mpaka kwa MCA iwekwe pamoja hii fedha iende moja kwa moja kwa shule zetu shule zetu ziweze kupata ufadhili moja kwa moja ndio wanafunzi wetu wote waweze kupata e, msaada wa kwenda shuleni elimu iwe bure kwa sababu utapata kwamba ndio yule kijana apate ile basari aidha anahusiana na mbunge ama women rep ama yule old administrator kama ni mfumo wa county ama amepiga mzazi wake amefanya siasa kwa yule kiongozi na sio sawa wanafunzi wengi hawasaidiki vile vile ile fedha inapeanwa kile kiwango ni kidogo mno sana utapata mtu ana deni la shilingi 1060 anapewa basari ya shilingi 1800 na bado anadaiwa shilingi 1060 yule mwanafunzi hawezi rudi shuleni na ile cheki 1800 ni lazima asubiri tena chimera aje asaidie 1400 asubiri tena mbunge asaidie 1300 na mbunge atakwambia pesa haijakuja ya basari mwisho wa siku yule kijana anakosa kwenda shuleni anakaa nyumbani na mwisho wa siku maisha yake ya baadaye yanaharibika mimi ni wazo langu tu ikiwa tunaweza kubaliana kama viongozi na kama wananchi wa nchi tukufu ya Kenya hii tukae pamoja tuunde mfumo ambao unaweka fedha yote hii kwa pamoja na fedha mbalimbali mbali, na fedha nyingine ya ufadhili wale kutoka pande nyingine tusaidie tuweke mfumo wa fedha moja ili kila mwanafunzi ndani ya nchi hii aweze kupata elimu ya sekondari ambayo itakuwa ni bure. Asante. And these are checks that don't bounce. If we put all this money together into a kit, not necessarily domiscere the Ministry of Education, but give it to the Treasury and let us have schools getting these monies directly from Exchequer to go towards funding their capitation needs and everybody accesses education. We, we make it free. That's the argument I'm actually bringing forth. Otherwise, we cannot sustain the military program as it is today unless we find a way of streamlining it. In a way, every Kenyan benefits from real material financial support and adversary program. When you look at what has been proposed uh, from the clerk of the National Assembly, it is uh, fundamentally different from what some of us have understood and are trying to propose. What the National Assembly is trying to propose is the same thing. We are simply saying there is a petition before uh, the High Court in Nakuru. And by the way, that petition is very, is very, it raises very salient uh, issues that every Kenyan must read and understand the petition. It actually goes towards challenging the legality and constitutionality of something called bursaries, especially when counties are giving bursaries. Because we know uh, the fourth schedule uh, gives functions. We know at Colonnade 6, you know, uh, specifically says who needs to run uh, bursaries and at what level and at what uh, scholarship programs you're doing. So basically, the, the proposal by the National Assembly is simply saying, let us harmonize the way we have Bursary programs under MGCDF. It doesn't talk about making it universally acceptable. It doesn't talk about making education free. It only talks about harmonizing, streamlining. They're giving it very beautiful names, by the way, and adjectives. You streamline, you harmonize, you consolidate MGCDF bursary program. But they are not talking about removing it in totality from the control of a politician called a member of parliament into something else that will directly wire the money to schools that schools will never suffer a challenge of capitation so that students can actually access uh, education in school. That's the point we are fundamentally differing from. But I know I will have a chance to go and put in my, my views and uh, perhaps propose something that would, would, uh, is geared towards making sure education is freely. People have used uh, the bursary as a political tool. Even when they're campaigning, you know, suddenly you will find certain sentiments but they're saying if you don't vote for me, then the bursary program will go away. Because maybe that guy is the initiator of that bursary program. And you know, people sometimes, they, they perish because of lack of information. They believe if I don't vote uh, Chimera, for instance, the bursary program runs, will go under. Yet it is a policy, it is in law. So also the way the bursary program is being administered nationally 
it is uh, not uh, streamlined. It is discriminatory in nature. A politician would always want to reward people who supported him in the elections. So there's some kind of tokenism with the whole uh, administration framework of this uh, bursary program. You will find uh, a student who has a fee balance of, uh, let's say, Kenya shillings, 50,000 shillings. And the much he can get today, if you're to walk into any uh, MP's office, myself included, will be about 7,000 shillings on the higher side. And the balance is 50,000 shillings. And that person comes, let me, let, let's say, from a village. He comes from Mutumwa. He leaves Mutumwa, which is the farthest point of uh, Kwale County, to go to the nearest uh, major town, say Mwangulu. He spends about uh, 500 shillings to go and coming back 500 shillings. So that's 1,000. If you do the math, that particular uh, student has actually earned 6,000 shillings against a fee balance of 50,000 shillings. He still is not able to actually go back to school and study. I will give you a, a case scenario. I myself, I actually have a program. It's not a program, but the need from the public. They meet me. They say you are a senator. However, we are nominated, yes, but we still need uh, support in terms of school fees. I have to give them checks, my own personal checks. I have checks here, before you, here, from my law firm, Chimera Kamodan Company Advocates, giving Matuga Girls High School, giving Kwale Girls High School, giving Matuga Girls again, giving Nanyuki High School, you know, and many, many other schools. And it's not so much money, uh, I can tell you. It's about, this is 8,000 shillings, this is about 4,000. You know, I have to really balance. And this is from your pocket? This is from my pocket. You can see there's a forwarding letter. It, has, it bears my law firm's logo. There is a check. This is a check drawn by Chimera Company Advocates going towards paying fees for students from Kuala County. And they still have access to NGCDF bursaries. They have access to the County Government Scholarship Program. They have access to many other bursary programs. But it is not enough.